Okay, focus. I'm not talking to you, the viewers. I'm talking to the camera because it doesn't always seem to focus the first couple seconds. Anyway, let's start off by showing you the rest of my Physics All-Stars collection. There's Niels Bohr and his buddies. Enrico Fermi and his colleagues. And Richard Feynman and his buddies. Yeah, there's only 18 cards in the series, but that makes it very rare and very valuable. Alrighty. We know that if ax squared plus bx plus c factors, then we have to find two numbers. Let's call them m and n. That multiply to a times c. And that add up to b. But why? Why is that? It is not obvious. So let's prove why we have to for, look for those two numbers. First, what we're going to do is we're going to write this in factored form. So if it factors, then it could quite easily be dx plus e and fx plus g using, using the next four letters of the alphabet. If I expand that, I'm going to get dfx squared plus dgx plus efx plus eg. So by comparison, we can see that a is df, b is dg plus ef, and C is EG. Let's write that down. So, therefore, A equals DF, B equals, like I said, DG plus EF, and C is equal to EG. Now, let's write this as H plus I. And let's multiply AC. AC is DF EG, which I can rewrite as DG EF by just changing the order. And notice that's the same as H times I, also known as HI. Just by rearranging those letters, you get that. So, that proves it because B must be the sum of two numbers and AC must be the product of those two numbers. Who would have thunk? That's why we do it. They probably never told you why, they just did it. That's why. Okay, this concludes my series on fractions without friction, I think. Um, we started off with basic fractions, then we went on to rational expressions which are fractions with variables. We talk about factoring and simplifying and so on and so forth. My next series is probably going to be permutations and combinations, the number of ways in which you can rearrange things. So stay tuned. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.